known as the Crocodile Hunter, Steve Irwin died 17 years ago when he was pierced in the chest by a stingray barb while filming a wildlife documentary. Steve's love for all creatures and his knack for being able to handle them so skillfully soon translated into a career. What happened on September 4, 2006? And why did the animal kill Steve? Steve grew up loving all wildlife, especially reptiles. He caught his first venomous snake at the tender age of six and would often arrive late to school after convincing his mother to pull over so he could rescue a lizard off the road. By the time he was nine years old, Steve was helping catch small problem crocodiles, hanging around boat ramps by jumping on them in the water and wrestling them back into the dinghy. He always had an uncanny sixth sense when it came to wildlife and spent his life honing that skill. In 1991, he started managing Birwa Reptile and Fauna Park, which his parents had run since 1970, and eventually changed the name to the Australia Zoo. His larger-than-life enthusiastic personality also paved the way to global television fame, most notably in the TV documentary series The Crocodile Hunter from 1997 to 2004. Audiences were often spellbound by Steve's dangerous encounters with animals on the series. He thought nothing of tangling with deadly snakes, spiders, lizards, and of course, crocodiles. In addition to his hair-raising adventures, he considered himself a wildlife educator, sharing his knowledge and enthusiasm for animals with his viewers. Steve occasionally drew criticism for his stunts. Some said that he was exploiting the animals that appeared on his shows. He stirred up even greater controversy in 2004 for feeding a crocodile while holding his infant son. Many were shocked by the images of Steve and his son Robert with the snapping crocodile and accused Irwin of child endangerment. Steve was never charged in regard to this incident and stated that his son was never in harm's way. By July 2006, Steve was on top of the world. He was married to the love of his life, American Terry Irwin, and dad to daughter Bindi and son Robert. Steve treasured every opportunity to share his love for wildlife with his children. He instilled in them the need to treat every living being with kindness. Steve was incredibly proud of his children and often said if he was to be remembered for anything, he hoped that it was for being a good dad. Steve and Terry set out a 10-year business plan for their beloved zoo. Tragically, Steve passed two months later. On September 4, 2006, Steve was filming a new program off the coast of Port Douglas in Queensland, Australia. Throughout his 44 years, Steve had taken on and defeated many of the most dangerous creatures on the planet. Nobody expected that the animal that would get the better of him was a normally tranquil fish. He was filming off Australia's Great Barrier Reef for a documentary to be called Ocean's Deadliest. The weather had been bad for three days, so Steve had been sitting around with little to do but wait for the weather to improve. The crew was searching for a tiger shark. They couldn't find one, so they all agreed to settle for a stingray intended for a separate project. This creature had an eight-foot width, so the footage was expected to be impressive. Stingrays are commonly found in the shallow coastal waters of temperate seas. They spend the majority of their time inactive, partially buried in sand, often moving only with the sway of the tide. The stingray's coloration commonly reflects the seafloor's shading, camouflaging it from predatory sharks and larger rays. Their flattened bodies are composed of pectoral fins joined to their head and trunk with an infamous tail trailing behind. Steve started swimming towards it, with the camera in his hand. They wanted to capture a scene where the stingray swam away, but nobody predicted the disaster that happened next. Instead of swimming away, this stingray stabbed Steve in his chest and severely injured him. It must be noted that it's very rare behavior for a stingray to fatally attack a human. Before Steve's stingray attack, only two other fatal attacks had been recorded in Australia. Cameraman Justin speculated that the incident was a freak accident, that the stingray must have seen Steve's shadow and thought it was a tiger shark, prompting it to attack. While Steve grappled with crocodiles, snakes, and sharks, he had one rule that the cameras must be kept rolling, and his final moments were no different. Perhaps knowing his injuries were far more serious than suspected, the cameras even caught the heartbreaking moment Steve turned to one of the crew members and calmly said, I'm dying, which would have been his final words. Once back on Croc 1, a second cameraman took over so Justin could give Steve mouth to mouth something he continued to do for an entire hour until paramedics took one look at him and declared him dead. In the days that followed, the tape was handed over to Queensland police to help with their investigations. 
rumors immediately circulated that it would be shown on TV, but Discovery Communications, the network that made Steve a star, insisted the footage would never see the light of day. The authorities, in 2007, said they had destroyed all copies except one, which they handed to Steve's heartbroken widow, Terry. Terry confirmed her husband's desire to have his death filmed, but said it was too much to handle and destroyed the only copy without ever watching it. Terry told You Magazine in 2018, After Steve died, 100 million viewers watched a video of his death that was released on YouTube. That film was a complete fabrication, exploiting people's sadness. I have never watched the real footage. Why would I? I know how my husband died, and I was relieved that the children weren't on the boat as they usually would be. It would have been horrendous if they had witnessed it. Steve continues to be remembered today for his many contributions to the field of wildlife education and conservation, including running an organization to rescue and protect crocodiles and supporting numerous other animal charities. November 15th has been designated Steve Irwin Day, an international tribute held annually in recognition of his life and work. Today, Australia Zoo and Steve's legacy lives on. The Irwin family runs a wildlife hospital, and Steve's foundations continue to chug along, helping people and animals wherever they can. And two different species are named after Steve, Irwin Snapping Turtle, or Elsea Irwini, and a tree snail called Crikey Steve Irwini. Bindi Irwin continues to work on conservation programs at the Australia Zoo, together with her mother and younger brother Robert. She also enjoys television and her program, Crikey, has received much recognition. She also won the entire 2015 season of Dancing with the Stars. Robert Irwin is continuing to follow in his dad's footsteps and hoping to make him proud along the way. This includes interacting with reptiles and engaging in crocodile fights. He was also nominated for a Logie Award in 2013 for his performance in Steve Irwin's Wildlife Warriors. In a recent conversation with E! News, the 19-year-old conservationist opened up about his father's legacy and what parts continue to inspire his life today. I think what dad really showed the world was, of course, to have that appreciation for the natural world and to treat every living being on this planet as you would wish to be treated. I think that's something that I'll always carry with me.